Welcome to Highway 20 here in southern Utah. We're at this really nice road cut here and another episode of Random Road Cuts. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here looking at a new road cut. Random Road Cuts is a series where we just stop, look at an interesting road cut, and together try to piece together the observations and come up with some viable interpretations for what we're seeing. Got a lot of cars coming through this section. There we go. So this is the road cut we're gonna check out. And let's just go ahead and head over and work on this road cut from this eastern end over towards the western side. We can see that there's definitely some layering here, some different colors in the rocks. And looks like the first outcrop we have is of this white unit here. We have white, we can see a lot of layering in here. Um, so we've got bedding, and you might be able to pick out something I've taught about in previous episodes, and that is we have some cross bedding. So we have some layers here that come in at different angles compared to other layers. As we look at this material, pretty, I'd say it's about medium grain size in terms of medium sand size in terms of the grain size here. Um, we can see there's a little bit of differences in the grain size in some of the individual layers. There's also these interesting discolored, rounded, concentric blobs in the rock, which is kind of an interesting phenomenon. I'm not sure I can figure that out on the fly. There's another one right up, a couple of them right up here. Um, but these look like windblown dune deposits to me for the most part. Um, this part of Utah, we're in the Colorado Plateau region, but we're also far enough north in the Colorado Plateau that there's this interesting part of central Utah that's called the Marysville Volcanic Field, where we get quite a bit of volcanics as well. And so we also have to consider that this could be not just uh, regular sand grains, but this could be possibly windblown ash deposits. We'd have to look at some of this stuff really closely with either a hand lens or under a microscope and see if these light colored particles are actually little tiny uh, shards of ash or actually pieces of of sand grains that have been blown around. So that's our first unit here, this white uh, windblown deposit of either ash or sand grains. Uh, and then that grades up, there's a nice sharp contact here with a very different unit. Let me work over to it over here. And as we look into the next unit up, we can see it's composed of a lot of different class, a lot of rock fragments or particles of different colors. Um, looks like there's a lot of different sizes and shapes here. I can see some particles look a little more rounded, others are somewhat angular. And the size of the particles varies a little bit. There's some up here that are, you know, approaching like softball size, and then some smaller ones as well. This layer also doesn't have any of the, the bedding that we see in other places. Part of the fun of roadside or road cuts is uh, dealing with the traffic noise. But it's pretty massive, right? We're not looking at any internal bedding here. It's uh, all one unit stacked together. As we work our way from the bottom though, looks like the grain sizes maybe go up to softball size, but as we work our way up this unit, looks like they get a little bit bigger. Here's a, a larger class, uh, and then as going up from there, there's some even larger class all cemented together. Again, it's just kind of a chaotic mixture of particles, um, and without any internal bedding in it, being more massive like this, the interpretation might be that it was all laid down in one event. So one single event possibly deposited all this material. Uh, and it's backing up a little bit here. It's probably about um, four to five meters in terms of its thickness. We can see it at the bottom down here. And then the top of it runs over here. Everything's gently dipping to the west or to the left here. So we've got the white uh, windblown deposit down low. 
and then this you know 12 to 14 foot thick three to four meter or so layer of uh, conglomerate and breccia i suppose these larger particles all cemented together looks like there's a zone in here where the particle sizes are a little bit bigger uh, but it looks like without any internal layering or bedding to it it indicates it might have been deposited all at once possibly a big landslide um, some sort of collapse of a slope breaking up and moving all those rocks together and then depositing them all at once that's a possible interpretation there then as we work up above that there's a really nice sharp contact above that unit and then there's these more of these white looks like a little bit of the same as the first unit we saw this white windblown sandy type unit but let's go take a closer look at that here so here's the contact with this uh, more coarse grained unit the gravel sized particles angular pieces again it's it's chaotic so it, to me it looks a lot like what you'd expect from uh, a landslide or gravity fed uh, slope failure and then we get into sort of these coarse grained sands uh, maybe some medium grain sand particles as well but this nice sharp contact here uh, similar to what we saw at the first unit, there's a few places in here where there's these discolored rounded zones. Possibly this is groundwater moving through this unit, which is very porous and permeable, and then maybe just staining it a little bit with some either some iron oxidation or some other mineralization there. Um, but we can see again these big cross beds. So the main beds go this way, but these cross beds are sweeping up add an angle to those we'll back up a little bit here and work our way across so it looks like another windblown dominated unit all uniform grain sizes um, in this section it's all pretty much the same size and then the cross beds are pretty uh, pretty in indicative of this type of depositional environment again these weird concentric discolored spots are really interesting to me uh, and I'm not sure exactly what the story is on those but then working our way to the east we're working our way or excuse me west we're working west and we're working our way up section so the rocks are getting younger as we move this way then there's another sharp contact here let me back up so you can see it all with the the white windblown sand nice sharp contact dipping to the west and then we have another unit that looks very similar to that that second one we looked at darker material made out of clasts rock particles of different shapes and sizes and it's massive right we're not seeing any layering in this um, if you see a few breaks in here that's the terracing from the construction of this road cut so it looks like maybe another uh, slope failure, landslide type deposit. Looking at the nature of this contact up close, uh, it's just a really sharp break there, um, which could either be this material here sliding down. So if this was a landslide type feature, it would slide down over the top of these units and you'd expect maybe a very sharp contact. There's a potential it's a fault contact as well although don't have any real direct evidence for that um, and then as we look at this internally again just lots of different material in here a lot of the particles i'm seeing inside this unit some of them look volcanic to me some of them have little tiny crystals in there some might be sedimentary but very massive i mean that goes all the way up to the top of the cliff band there and then they've got these uh, terraces cut into uh, this unit there's actually some pieces falling off from the top that you can see along the bottom here that nicely show the angular nature of these rocks 
So I think the best name for this unit overall, I think I'd go with it being a breccia, looking at the angular nature. So many of the particles here, quite angular in terms of their shape, there's sharp points on them. Um, it's poorly sorted, which means we have rocks of various sizes all glued together. So we have mostly angular shapes, but then lots of different um, sizes of particles. And let's see if we can find, sometimes looking at the biggest particle is helpful because it kind of tells you what energy level you might be looking at. There's a big particle right here straight in front of me uh, that's maybe, I don't know, 30, 40 centimeters across, a little more than a foot perhaps. Um, and there is some like crude bedding. You can see there's larger grain sizes in here. Um, so there may be more than one depositional event, but there's no breaks between the units. It doesn't look like there's really a lot of layering in between these individual units. So what an impressive road cut though, just really cool. So we saw some variability there at the beginning with those white windblown deposits and then working our way this way. There are some interesting fracture patterns uh, in the unit there. So there's some of these sub-vertical fractures running through the rock. And then now we're down here almost to the western end of the outcrop. And yeah, more of the same. Um, the other interesting thing would be to see if the matrix, if this pinkish material in here is ash, because there's a potential now that I'm just thinking out loud, looking at this material for the first time, that some of these could be volcanic in origin. So while it could be a, a landslide or gravity-driven slope failure, it could also potentially be uh, a pyroclastic flow deposit or something of a volcanic origin, depending on if the, the particles in here, these in the pinkish zones in here, are um, is dominated by ash. Great little road cut, though. Uh, and then I think we're pretty much at the the western edge of this thing on this side here. Fantastic. Let's get one more quick look at it before we kind of wrap it up. And sorry about all the cars here. Busy enough highway. This is kind of a little connector highway between uh, Interstate 15 and uh, US Highway 89. But this nicely shows some of these angular class, these darker particles embedded in this material here. So we'll go ahead and give it one last look. That's sort of the outcrops going up there. And then looking up the slope, we can see there's even larger particles. It looks like it's more or less the same as we transition from the lighter uh, road cut, which has been cut into to some of the darker outcrops up there. It looks like there's some larger class. Some of them I'm seeing up there are in excess of a meter in diameter. So maybe like three or four feet in diameter. Pretty exceptional. Uh, there's even one down here, still in the road cut. Right here you can see a large particle embedded in the rock. So either volcanic or possibly gravity-driven processes, maybe a little bit of both, that define this road cut here. Well, thanks friends for joining me, uh, geology professor Sean Wilsey, looking at another random road cut. I love this series. I know a lot of you do too, because it's fun for me to just show up here and look at the rocks and work with you to try to figure out what's going on, making observations, coming up with viable interpretations, just doing good old, uh, good old fashioned science. We can step across the road real quick without the cars coming and take one last look at this thing. Beautiful little road cut here on Highway 20 in Southern Utah. Thanks again for joining me. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, uh, share, go out, do all those good things. There's links in the video description if you want to donate to my geology education efforts. And we'll see you next time from another road cut. Thanks so much.